Essex, my home county for the past decade, has been shaped by a variety of cultures, from ancient Britons, Danes, Saxons, Normans, Vikings and Romans over the centuries. Situated in the southeast of England between London and the North Sea, with an area of 3,670 square kilometers and housing a population of 1.9 million people, recorded as of 2019, it consists of 12 districts, with Chelmsford being its capital and two unitary authorities of Southend and Thurrock. That is the cursory modern day summary of the county. In this episode, I will briefly go into the history of Essex and some interesting facts. So let's get straight into it. The historic county of Essex is low-lying with a flat coast that has many tidal inlets and islands. The hardwood forests cover on its predominantly clay soils resisted agricultural efforts until the Iron Age, and even today some tracts of land that were never converted farmland survive as woodland, notably in Epping Forest. The area of Essex was ruled by the Celtic Rioventis tribe before Romans. There was a dispute between the Catuvelloni and Rioventis, which the Romans took advantage of for the invasion attempt in 54 BCE. In 43 CE, when Claudius returned to invade from Rome, Trinoventis allied with them. This led to the formation of the first capital of Roman Britain, Camulodunum, or Colchester. The Trinoventis, however, later fought with the Asini tribe against Roman rule. Essex comes from Kingdom of Siax, or Kingdom of East Saxons, or Kingdom of Essex different iterations of the same name. This was one of the seven kingdoms of the Anglo-Saxons, established after Roman rule by Ercanwen, listed as the first king of Essex in 527 AD or CE for Common Era. Just a little side note, I am most likely to use BCE for before Common Era instead of BC which is before Christ and CE for Common Era instead of AD and no domini. It's a bit easier this way. Kingdom of Essex covered the territories of modern day Essex, Hertfordshire, Middlesex, and for a short time Kent. The kingdom was bounded to the north by the River Stow and the Kingdom of East Anglia, to the south by the River Thames and Kent, to the east lay the North Sea, and to the west, Mercia. The territory included the remains of two provincial Roman capitals, Colchester and London. Colchester, which is still in modern day Essex, as I mentioned before, is the oldest British town in history, first established by the Romans, which probably deserves a separate episode of its own, so I'll discuss that at some other point. In 825 Common Era, Essex became part of Kingdom of Wessex and was later ceded under the Treaty of Wetmore to the Dane law under the Kingdom of East Anglia. In 991 CE, the Battle of Malden resulted in complete defeat of the Anglo-Saxons by the Vikings and is commemorated in the poem The Battle of Malden. In 1066 CE, the Normans from northern France invaded England, with William the Conqueror at their helm. Within 20 years of William's victory, the whole Anglo-Saxon nobility in Essex was replaced by the Normans. The Saxon kingdom formed the basis of a county in 1139 under the first Earl of Essex, Geoffrey de Mandeville. They often changed a village or town's name to make it easier for them to pronounce, um, which is the Normans, or because the Normans just didn't like the original names. They also disliked saying the letter S. So, Snottingham, the settlement of Snot, became Nottingham. In Essex, the residents of Fulipet, Filthy Hole, were grateful for the Normans changing it to Beaumont, Fairhill. Many places also assumed the name of the Norman owners. 
The Peveril in Hatfield Peveril refers to Ranulf de Peveril. Similarly, what was simply recorded as Udham in the Little uh, Doomsday Book acquired the latter part of the Henry de Ferrer's name, giving us Woodham Ferrers. The Normans were great builders as well, constructing around 500 castles alone, many such as the ones at Plushy and Rayleigh no longer exist, but in Haddingham and Colchester we have two stone Norman castles in Britain, and at Stansted Mount Fitchett you'll find a unique recreation of a wooden moat and bailey, uh, complete with authentic medieval village. So that is a brief early history of the formation of Essex as a company. The coat of arms of Essex is three C axes, which are these three um, short swords uh, with a sort of hook towards the end. They look more like scimitars as opposed to a C axe, was traditionally a different shape. And they were used by Saxons who settled in these lands from the 5th century onwards. The hook or notch at the end, it is said, was used to drag the enemy boats closer and the shorter nature of the sword meant it was quicker to deal deadly blows. Let's see some other interesting facts about Essex. At a thousand years old, St. Andrews at Greenstead is believed to be the oldest wooden church in the world built in 1080 CE. Essex is home to Britain's first ever town, smallest town and biggest village. The first ever town, as we mentioned before, being Colchester, built by the Romans with old Roman walls in the city still over there, which are over 2000 years old. Smallest town being Manningtree, with only a population of 900 people, a more of a village, but technically by the old letter of the law, it is regarded as a town. And biggest village of Britain being Tiptree, with a population of 9000 people, but being technically classified as a village, also home to the all famous Tiptree Jams. One of the most famous doctors in history must be Queen Elizabeth the first personal physician William Gilbert, who was born in Colchester. After practicing medicine for many years in London, he became the physician to the Queen during her final years. After her death, he was appointed to King James I, although the doctor's own death quickly followed, likely due to the plague. Gilbert is also credited by many to be one of the earliest founders of electricity and magnetism and is likely to have originated the word electricity. Now the Great Dunmore Flitch Trials, dating all the way back to 1104, is the oldest recorded competition in Britain. Happening every four years, married couples have to compete to prove their love and devotion to each other in a series of events. The winner gets the prize of a flitch of bacon, which is half pig cut lengthwise. The modern trials take the form of a court presided over by a judge with counsel representing the claimants and opposing counsel representing the donors of the flitch of bacon, uh, together with a jury of six maidens and six bachelors, a clerk of the court to record the proceedings and an usher to maintain order. The court is held in a marquee erected on um, Talbert's lay, especially for the occasion um, and couples. Um, claimants married for at least a year and a day come from far and wide to try and claim the flitch. It is not a competition between the couples. All the couples could be successful in the claim, which is vigorously defended by counsel employed uh, on behalf of the donors of the bacon, whose job is to test the evidence and to try and persuade the jury not to grant them the flitch. Successful couples are then carried um, shoulder high by bearers um, 
in the ancient flitch chair to the marketplace, uh, where they take the oath, similar to pre-reformation marriage vows, kneeling on pointed stones. Uh, unsuccessful couples have to walk behind the empty chair to the marketplace, consoled with the price of gem. Now the oath goes something like this: You do swear by custom of confession that you never made nuptial transgression, nor since you were married, man and wife, by household brawls or contentious strife. Or otherwise in bed or at board, offended each other in deed or in word, or in a twelve month time and a day, repented not in thought in any way, or since the church clerk said Amen, wished yourself unmarried again, but continue true and desire as when you join hands in holy court. South End on Sea has the world's longest pleasure pier, measuring 1.34 miles. Work started on it in 1829, and it has uh, been open ever since. The pier is so big; it's home to its own train track, along with cafes, uh, shops, rides, mini golf, and more. Following on from that, the Essex coastline is over 350 miles long. That's the equivalent of driving from London to the Alps to give you an idea of uh, the kind of distance we're talking about. Also, the Essex coastline is the second longest of any English county. Only Cornwall has a longer coastline than Essex. The first ever radio broadcast in the world was made in June 1920. This took place in a studio in Chelmsford, making them pioneers of international radio waves. The New Street Works was a manufacturing plant built by the Marconi Company in Chelmsford by Marconi in 1912. It is credited as being the first purpose-built radio factory in the world. Now, a somewhat weird fact: greyhound racing is popular all over Essex. But once Romford Greyhound Racetrack hosted a cheetah race in an attempt to draw in the crowds and make more money. Well, obviously it was banned soon after the race. But it's funny to think that they actually hosted a race between cheetahs. Weird, isn't it? Saffron Walden Turf Maze is the largest of its kind in the world and is one of just eight surviving turf mazes in England. Turf uh, mazes were once quite a common sight in Europe, and at least 60 others were known to exist. The maze is first mentioned in 1699. This one in Sutton Walden, uh, when the council accounts records that the sum of 15 shillings was paid to cut the grass, although the maze itself is believed to be 800 years old. Robert the Bruce, one of Scotland's famous sons, was born. At Montpellier's farm in Brittle near Chelmsford in 1274 in Essex, Bruce's father was in Westminster for the cor- coronation of King Edward I in the summer of 1274, and his son was born in July. So the dates match up. His father also owned parts of Chelmsford at that time, so he was born on his estate. So it's very likely that this fact is not. Just a rumor, but true that Robert the Bruce was actually born in Essex. It is believed that five of the past U.S. presidents were direct descendants from people in Essex. There are claims that the Mayflower, the ship which was built in Harwich, uh, which famously made the transatlantic voyage to North America in 1620, had a crew that mostly came from Essex. The crew eventually settled in America, and five of their descendants became presidents. These are believed to be George Washington himself, John Adams, John Quincy Adams, George H. W. Bush, and George W. Bush.
all right folks now i can keep on telling you more and more facts about the county i have resided in for the past decade but this will just have to do for now i hope you enjoyed this fun pack episode now i know it has been a while since i have published an episode um, but i had some personal issues that uh, personal health issues that i had to deal with uh, which meant i had to delay um, recording any of the episodes however now that i'm getting back to my health um i hope to be more consistent in recording the episodes um i've also decided to um shorten the time of the of each episodes or uh, well, most of the episodes up to 15 to 20 minutes however probably uh, me rambling on right now might increase the time uh, but i've decided to do it for 15 20 minutes um because it keeps the interest of the people more and i uh, hope you like the shorter package of um the episodes better well let's see how it goes anyways next time i will dig up something related to christmas for our christmas special episode maybe a long list of christmas related facts or christmas traditions from uh, different countries or something different cultures or whatever some something related to christmas and i hope to record it uh, for you guys before christmas uh, till then take care be good and thank you so much for listening